I'm James Wong. I'm a scientist and a gardener, and I make natural remedies. I want to make people think differently about plants. You can find many of the same drugs that you're used to picking up in your pharmacy growing all around you. It's just like a different type of packaging. I'm not some hippie who believes in flower power. I'm an ethnobotanist trained at Kew Gardens. After studying the use of plants for years, I've got recipes to help with minor ailments from coughs and colds to acne and even some beauty treatments to make you look and feel wonderful. I want to show you how easy, how cheap it is to make your own home remedies from stuff that's probably already in your back garden. Loads of drugs already in your medicine cabinet contain active ingredients that come from plants. Many plants haven't been clinically tested because they're traditional remedies that companies can't patent, but we do know a lot about the chemicals that plants contain and how they might work. Pharmaceutical companies have been raiding nature's larder for years, but we've lost this knowledge. I'm going to show you which plants to use and for what to put this knowledge back in your hands. You can use all types of plants to treat common ailments, but in this program, I'm going to be using vegetables. Most people think of vegetables as something that's exclusively edible, that has no medicinal benefits, the kind of thing you stick along with your Sunday roast just for taste. However, hidden in the plants in this allotment are a whole host of really exciting chemicals. It's just about harnessing them. Loads of people ask me, what's a herb, what's a vegetable, what's a fruit? Where, where are the dividing lines? Well, as a botanist, vegetables are, are pretty much anything you can eat that comes from a plant source. It's really a culturally defined term. You don't need green fingers or a science lab to grow and make your own remedies. It's easy, it's cheap, and it's natural. Ooh, that's good. I'm going to show you how to spice things up with a pain-relieving chili plaster. It looks like something out of Ghostbusters. Treat yourself with a soothing cucumber eye gel. Create a tasty snack from artichoke as part of a low cholesterol diet. And tackle athlete's foot using garlic. It's not a clinical trial and many factors can influence results. But I'm going to see whether they can ease the symptoms for people in need of help. It's worked, yeah, it has worked. I'm just a really, really happy Amazed. I will definitely use it again. You've probably already eaten most of these vegetables. But as with any of my remedies, you should check for allergies before you try them. We've all felt the aches and pains of a muscle injury, but it's a weekly occurrence for this lot. My first remedy will tackle the problem head on. And I'm going to try it out on the whole rugby team. I'm the first team captain of the Saracens Amateurs men's team. Massive game for you today. Let's go out there and let's play our game. I love playing rugby and I've played for, for years and years and years. Uh, it's a contact sport. You're often playing against big strong men. The type of injuries that we would receive tend to be uh, muscle strain, tissue damage. People get knocked out, concussion and things like that. And the collarbone often goes. Anything that could help to reduce these aches and pains would be, would be good. I think help could be here in South Devon. And believe it or not, it's chilly. I'm going to use it to make a pain-relieving chilli plaster. This farm specialises in growing chillies, and I've come to choose a variety with just the right amount of spice. So, come on and have a look hey, around. Check this out. I think most people just think about maybe the red ones you see in the supermarket, the big fat ones, and then the green ones, and that's it. They, people yeah. don't know that there are, there are just so many different types of chili. And some can be much hotter than others. The heat is measured on the Scoville scale. The more units on the scale, the spicier the chili. Jalapenos that you might see sliced on the top of your pizza yeah. are about 10,000. Yeah. And the hottest chilies at the moment in the world, um, ones that originate from northern India, are yeah. just over a million. 
these are the, the hottest chilies in the world. So a million Scoville units, US grade pepper spray is what, two million units? Something like that. We'll, we'll break it open, shall we? Okay. So if you want to dip your finger in and have a go, okay, just a tiny on. little, just, just, your, just a fingernail like, even. Like that. Just, yeah, yeah. Wow. You could make like a hundred vindaloos with that one chili? It's, yeah, it would be inedible. It's, I, yeah. I think we'll go for a, a milder one. Yeah. We've had to wash our hands after touching that chili because it's so spicy. It started burning. It's gone up to the top of my nose, into my lips, and inside my mouth, and inside my gums. There's a chemical in chili called capsaicin, and as well as giving them their hot taste, it can relieve pain when applied to the skin. And some pharmaceutical pain relieving creams contain it. I think we can go a lot spicier than this. Yeah. So I just need to find the right amount of spice. Let's try orange habaneros, or they, they're also known as Scotch bonnets as These well. These are really spicy. But they are, so they're, they're about um, probably 250,000 Scoville units. Still a quarter of the strength of the, of the, of the hottest. OK, yeah, that, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like these. Let's go for some of these. Right. These Scotch bonnet chilies will be perfect. You can grow them really easily at home. Just buy the seeds from a nursery. And they're available in some supermarkets. Chili contains a mixture of chemicals called capsaicin. This gives them the heat you taste. The more capsaicin, the spicier the chili. When applied to the skin, chili causes substance P, a pain-transmitting chemical, to be released from the nerve endings. Once this is gone, the pain is relieved. Hi there, Nick. How's it going? I've managed to persuade Nick to get his teammates to give my chili plasters a go, and he's come along to help me make them. Do you want to have a go? What, what are we talking? Like eating or putting it to your tongue? Just, or? just lick it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty that powerful. Woo! Yeah, that's quite yeah. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that. <laughs> they should induce a warming sensation reduce some of the pain and also reduce the inflammation. So they work in three different ways. So we've got about 200 grams of chilies here, pretty finely chopped. Essentially, we're gonna make a tea, but out of the chilies, but using oil instead of water. It's the oil we're gonna use. I've decided to use an oil that looks a bit like lard. Um, it's coconut oil. It's the kind of oil that sets solid at room temperature, mm -hmm. but as soon as you heat it, it turns into a liquid. So like butter or lard. Yeah. Um, and I'm popping in an equal weight, so 200 grams. Yeah. I'm also going to add in some mustard powder. Oh, just to make it nice and hot, lovely. I'm going to add 12 teaspoons of it. 12? Yeah. That's quite a big Two. teaspoon you're doing there as well, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Maybe I should hang on there. <laughs> <laughs> mustard also provides a warming sensation that will give my plasters an extra kick. Put it on a really low heat until the coconut oil starts to melt and the vapours from the chilli start to escape. Yeah, you can definitely feel it, can't you? Then let it simmer for a couple of minutes. Basically, it's just about pressing all of it through a sieve so you extract the oil. The oil should now have the, the active chemical that you're looking for infused within it. Six teaspoons of beeswax will help the mixture set. You can buy this from herbal suppliers. Heat this mixture for a couple of minutes until the wax melts. You'll find some wax paper and a scissors and a straw. So if you could lay me out a sheet on the table. Over here, I've got some giant cotton pads. They're oh, called okay. cotton wound dressing, right. but... Yeah, I've, I've used them before, yeah. You need to get these pads into the oil while it's still quite hot, because okay. as it gets to room temperature, it's set solid. Right. This mixture will make about five chilli plasters. They'll set after a couple of minutes and can be fixed to the skin using adhesive dressings found in the chemist. They'll keep in an airtight container for up to a month. They're quite hardcore in terms of dosage, but you're a rugby team, I'm sure you'll be able to handle it. <laughs> Anything that can help improve the, uh, the aches and small injuries would be, would be massively beneficial, so no, I think they'll be really keen to do it. Excellent, as long as they don't chew on them. <laughs> well, there's a couple of players that are a little bit raw, so you never know. These chilies are strong, so always wash your hands. Don't get them on sensitive, broken or inflamed skin. Avoid the eyes and always do a 24-hour skin test. Right. Good luck with them. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> It's been a rough game on the pitch, and these players would usually use regular gels and creams to soothe their aches. So will they take my chilli plasters seriously? Potatoes. 
It's just horrible. They're a bit skeptical, but they're willing to give them a go. Where we go, Sam? Just about here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. An hour later, what's the verdict? Ooh, lovely. It's a bit looser, actually. Yeah, I feel feel better for it. The pain has subsided and the area has loosened. I feel lo looser. Yeah, it feels looser. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's worked. Yeah, it has worked. Instead of having the pain from from muscles, I get it from the um, heat of the pad, which I'm not sure if that's good or not. To be honest, the movement I've got in my back is is much better, much better. Certainly something I'd I'd use again. I'm surprised the lads are up for using the plasters, so why not have a go yourself? My next remedy is a vegetable snack to use as part of a low cholesterol diet. As many as two out of three people in the UK are believed to have higher cholesterol than is recommended, and if it's too high, it can affect your heart. Ro and Susie are both familiar with the problem. When my mother had angina diagnosed, I decided to go and get myself tested. And, and at that point, I discovered I had high cholesterol. These days, Rose's cholesterol is fine, and she's looking for something to maintain this. But Susie's been recently diagnosed. I was really quite shocked when they told me I'd got high cholesterol. It would actually mean the world to me if I could find a remedy. And if it brings it down, well, hey, you know. I'm very interested in trying a natural remedy because I don't want to end up with a problems with my heart. This allotment's the perfect place to grow a vegetable that you can use to help keep your cholesterol in check. It's the artichoke. This is the part you'd recognize from seeing in a supermarket, and it kind of looks a bit like a thistle because it's from the thistle family. It's, it's actually an immature flower bud, and you peel back these scales to, to reveal the, the sweet bit beneath. But it's the leaf that really contains the highest dosage. The secret to growing the best artichokes is to try and recreate the climate they come from. And they come from quite dry, sandy soils in the Mediterranean region. And they actually take over quite a lot in waste ground in the UK with those conditions. So a hot, sunny situation with really dry, well-drained soil. I'm going to make a snack using these artichokes, and I'm going to combine them with a healthy hedger ingredient, hawthorn berries. Loads of people are really excited about all the superfoods you get nowadays that come from all over the world and are supposed to have these amazing properties. But what people don't realize is that growing in hedgerows are, are fruits like the hawthorn that are wild, native, free, and have just as exciting uses. If you pick these in season, you can freeze them for the rest of the year. But not all berries are safe to eat, so make sure you've done your research and you know what to pick. Artichokes contain antioxidants, including flavonoids. I'm adding hawthorn berries that also contain flavonoids. The artichoke helps to stop bad cholesterol being made in the body, while hawthorn berries help reduce the absorption of cholesterol in the diet, while also helping increase blood flow to the heart muscles. Rose Doctor has advised her to use a healthy diet to manage her cholesterol. So she's come along to make my artichoke and hawthorn berry snack. Yum. They're actually a, a traditional method used by Native Americans to dry out food. They have a constant supply of vitamins. So it's, yeah, it's, it's surprisingly easy to make. Start by roughly chopping four large artichokes. You can leave the rubbish that we normally dis dispose yeah, of. Yeah, the chemicals contain in all parts of the plant, particularly the leaf, but the leaves are a little bit better. The leaves look about as good as they taste. <laughs> and when I chop one up, and have a good sniff and tell me what you think they smell of. It'd be really interesting to see what you say. Well, grass, I'd say. Actually. Oh, really? I'd say they, they, they do smell a bit like grass, but do you think they smell a bit like super glue as well? I've never Plastic. 